Hey, what's up? It's Comic95. So today, I just finished my first interview with Nova, um, and yesterday, no, two days ago, I had my first interview with Gabba. I'm actually applying to both jobs simultaneously, and I'm trying to see, I guess, the differences between the two, and basically accept whichever one gives me the best offer. I am currently living in Tokyo, which is in the Kanto region. So my experience with applying to these companies is going to be very different um, from yours, but I just wanted to share my experience with the interviews. So for GABA, GABA actually tells you um, about a day or two after you apply, they will send you an email asking you to contact them within 10 days for a pre-interview. Um, I applied at a weird time around the holiday break for New Year, so I ended up calling them actually way past the 10-day mark. Um, when I tried to call them during their business hours, there was no answer, I got an automated message even although they should have been open, so I waited until the next day um, and I called back. And when I called, I told them that um, I explained that I had applied online and received an email from them. They then looked up my application and asked me just a few questions, basically wanted to know um, why I wanted to live in Japan as well as you know what are my long-term goals with being with them. and. That's pretty much it. Um, location preferences. They also asked if I was a graduate and they said they would get back to me um, in five days. They would give me a call. So that was my pre-interview. Very simple, not really an interview. With Nova, I just got off the phone with them less than an hour ago. Um, I was talking to them on Skype. I used my regular cell phone's camera to do so. I debated on whether I should use my laptop or not, but my laptop's camera is crap. So. Um, <laughs> anyway, the Nova one was a little bit more nerve-wracking, I won't lie, like a lot of you have probably already done. I looked on Glassdoor and I looked at what people had to say about the interviews, but I was still a little bit thrown off when it actually came time. I've never done a mock lesson before, although I've lived in Japan for over a year. Um, most jobs will literally like hire you on the spot. They see your application, they have you come in, they talk to you for two seconds, and you have the job. But this was a little bit different, especially since I am seeking visa sponsorship. Um, and on top of that, I'm kind of in a weird situation, which kind of gives me a little bit of an edge over someone who's not already in Japan. But I've already been here for over a year. I can speak a little bit of Japanese. I can read and write some too. And they don't have to worry about me, you know, not liking Japan and going back home for whatever reason, for the most part. So those are all things that my interviewer even said. They complimented the way that I was dressed, so I highly recommend that you dress professionally. If you are a lady, um, try to stick simple. Japan is not like America. It's not really recommended to try to be flashy and wear your loudest, brightest, newest blouse or whatever. I am wearing a cheap $20 blouse from Target, and I'm wearing a cheap $20 cardigan from Target. This is a $10 watch from Walmart, <laughs> and people, I get so many compliments on this. People think that this is real all the time. It's very sparkly, although you can't really see on camera, but it's my favorite watch. I've rebought it several times since I used to even work at Walmart. Long story short, back on subject, make sure that your blouse is buttoned up all the way, especially if you're a busty girl like me. Um, I was really debating on what I should wear. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> that was my watch. All the way up um, until this morning. So just stick with black and white white blouse, wear a black um, suit jacket or a cardigan, um, make sure everything's buttoned up, try to look as presentable and professional as possible, have your hair nicely done, don't overdo it on the makeup, light, semi-natural-ish looking makeup, no smoky eye, nothing crazy, I just have a cat eye, some cheap lip gloss, all of my makeup came from the drugstore, a combination of both America's drag makeup and Japan's. Um, and by the way, Japan's foundation is actually pretty great. Um, I am, I think, the darkest shade that they have available here. But that's all off subject. So anyway, back to the interview. Um, when I talked to Nova, this one was more extensive. It lasted for about 40 minutes on Skype. They did not call me on time. They were a few minutes late. They messaged me first and asked um, if I was ready for the interview. Um, they first started off just giving me a rundown as to what the hours were, seeing whether I wanted to work part-time or full-time, verifying my visa. Um, and that was pretty much it. Um, after that, they asked me same questions. Why do I want to live in Japan? Um, which region do I want? Why, why do I want to go to Kansai, which is where I'm planning on moving? Um, those were the questions that they asked. Then they told me they were going to dive into the actual interview. Oh, one more thing. So my interviewer, upon looking at my application on my resume, he noticed that I'm also from Chicagoland, and he is too. Um, I won't give any names of people for confidentiality reasons, I'm sure I'm not supposed to, um, but 
he was nice it started off a little bit rough it was almost like we were arguing about my visa status in a way um, because I might actually have to leave Japan and re-enter um, under a different visa but I was told that I can just update my residence status so I don't care which way it goes either is fine for me my objective is just to stay live and work here so back on subject um, it sounded oh he's also in Osaka which is the area that I plan to go to Kyoto and Osaka is um, where I'm hoping to get a job at either Gabo or Nova but I made it very clear that I'm flexible and that was something that they really like to hear that basically you know you're open you're dedicated to teaching you don't have to go to the gaijin bars on the weekend or at night you don't have to play an anime funland um, and Akihabara every weekend they want to hear stuff like that so tell them about how you like Japanese culture go into detail about how you like the traditional stuff here um, you like you know photography talk about other things besides just anime or I like Japanese people like women men I like dating them or whatever um things that make them realize that you are aware of what this country is like and this is advice for whether you currently live in Japan or not I live in Japan and they still ask me these questions um do keep in mind that you don't want to brag off or brag about and show off on your Japanese ability they do not want to speak Japanese to their students at all. Zero. There is no Japanese needed to work in Japan. And most jobs, including both of these companies, discourage it 110%. No matter how low of a level the students are, they never want you to speak a lick of Japanese. And they promise their students that they won't. And as they even told me, they've had students complain, ask for refunds, and even quit their program because the instructors would get frustrated when students couldn't understand and they would resort back to Japanese. So avoid that. Sorry for those of you who have studied really hard and you think, oh, like I'm bilingual, yeah, they're gonna hire me. Nope, they do not care. Um, of course, for these jobs, it is preferred and supposed to be required that you are a native English speaker and that you do have a bachelor's degree or the equivalent work experience. So, those are just a couple of heads up for you. Um, we did do a mock lesson, and exactly as it said on Glassdoor, I was asked to explain the difference between borrow and lend to a mid level English student. Um, I didn't really do a great job on the mock interview, despite the fact that I spent weeks looking at this and researching it, thinking that I had it, you know, down to a T. Um, but the interviewer really liked me. We took turns um, between me pretending to be the student and him being the student, which made this very um, simple because I got to see him demonstrate. And then I kind of just copied afterwards and just added a little bit more to it. I've already had experience here teaching private lessons, which was great because I was able to talk in detail about how I enjoy helping my students and how I'm learning too, being able to teach them stuff that I didn't think about that might be difficult. So those are all nice things to bring up um, during your interview when they're talking to you. Um, as they said during my interview, they really want the lessons to be the student speaking most of the time and you kind of just being, you know, there, if you will. I forgot the word they use. So basically you get the conversation going. This is their only time to be able to practice speaking English as this is Japan, there aren't a lot of English speakers here, and there isn't really a, um, not a lot of opportunities to use their English ability. Japanese people are very hard on themselves um, if they cannot speak fluently. And even those that can speak fluently, they judge themselves very harshly and will deny their English speaking ability. So you really want to encourage them to speak um, and have you know a nice icebreaker, a good way to um, make them feel comfortable. And the way to do this, the way that I do as well, as well as what they recommended during the interview, is to speak slowly and basic. So saying things like, hi, my name is Ren. I'm from Tokyo. What's your name? Where are you from? I like hamburgers. Do you like hamburgers? What is your favorite food? So simple stuff. And then explaining things good using, you know, um, hand gestures. Bad. Dislike. Um, no. Like can't do. You don't. Um, shaking your head. Yes. No. Use universal um, sign language. Kind of play charades um, when you're dealing with low level students. Um, you can use your cell phone camera, which is what I did. I did not use a laptop, so I didn't have much hand movement, but I did like explain what I was trying to do. Like for my ex, I just used my one finger. So if you have a good laptop, which I have a good laptop, but it has a horrible camera, um, <laughs> I would recommend using your laptop over a cell phone. Make sure your background is cleaner and nicer than mine's looks. But to be honest, this is what they had to see. I did move my little tiki cat thingy <laughs> to the side so it wouldn't be a distraction. Um, I probably should have done it for this video too. So yeah, um, at the end of the interview, he basically said that, you know, he likes me and he was asking, you know, when can I start, um, asked about my preferences once again, 
and that was pretty much the wrap of it they asked what was the best way to contact me i told them by email he said that i will hear back from them within one to two days 24 to 48 hours as he said which this lines up with the time frame that i was given according to glassdoor so really don't freak out so much it's most of them telling you about what the job is like and then for the mock lesson they asked the difference between lend and borrow so you had to explain he asked me, can I lend your bicycle? And it kind of confused me because as I said, lend and borrow are interchangeable. You can kind of use either word, but the goal is to keep the conversation short and simple and not to go into grammar too much. So instead, to explain it, lend, I give you. Borrow, you take from me. Very simple, plain. Um, ultimately, of course, they're kind of the same meaning. They're really synonyms, but it's too much to get into grammar with that and they're not looking for that. They want it to be simple so the students can understand. So make it very um, easy. <laughs> Don't feel overwhelmed or pressured. I'm a very shy person. Even although, you know, I spent all this time studying elementary education, I'm super, super shy. Um, I easily get discouraged. I had to continue smiling and seeming upbeat and ask questions. If you're unsure, don't be afraid to stop them. Say, hey, I didn't understand. Is this what you want from me? And I did that and everything seemed to have worked just fine. I will let you know whether I get the job or not either way it goes. But to be honest, I have a good feeling about both of these places so far. Um, with Nova, I did send them more information than I did GABA. They asked me for my um, resume, my cover letter. Um, my passport and residence card photos before they even um, interviewed me. Whereas with GABA, I just filled out a very generic application and they contacted me back and then I called them and they went over that information with me. So I'm expecting a very similar thing, but GABA has not scheduled a Skype interview. They just want to talk to me on the phone. So obviously phone interviews are much easier, but I am also expecting to do a Skype interview with them as well. Although technically I know that I could. Um, probably just interviewed at their office. So that is that. Basically, I'm just saying not much has changed. I highly recommend applying to both. Yes, we all know they may not be the best companies in the world, but the goal is ultimately just for visa sponsorship and to get your foot in the door. It's great experience. I've personally been teaching private lessons here in Japan for over a year now, so I already know what this is like. Um, you don't have to necessarily be an English major like how I was or you know have a degree in elementary education or education period um, You just need to be passionate about teaching and about um, helping your students is what they look for And if you like working with your students and helping them you will love your job regardless There are crazy students. I have dealt with harassment sexual harassment racial remarks. I've had it all um, that's kind of just life, if you will. You'll find that most of your students are very nice, welcoming, and loving. You just have to be patient with them and kind, and really try to figure out what they want to learn. The great thing about going through a school is that they have their own curriculum, so very little is really done on your end. You kind of work off of the materials that they give you versus private lessons where you have more freedom, and you can kind of do your own thing. So, if you don't already, Try to find some kind of way to volunteer with teaching English. Even if you live in the United States or Canada, maybe there's a very um, high percentage of a specific type of um, immigrant in your country. For example, in America, there are lots of Hispanic people. So there's oftentimes, I believe, ESL, sorry if I'm saying your own, um, classes in which you can volunteer or even get paid to help people learn English. That's a great experience for you to have when you come over here to Japan. If you're already in Japan, consider private teaching or find another school to work at. This way when you talk, you're not just saying, oh yeah, I think I can do the job. You know you can do it because you've done it before. Those are all great things that they want to hear. So that's that. I can go on forever talking about this. If you have any questions for me, feel free to message, email me, or comment down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Again, whether I get hired, fired, whatever happens, I will definitely update you, and I will update you about my visa process too. Um, currently, I am here. I forgot what they call it, but I have like a six-month extension, if you will, between now and me finding another job. So that is that. Um, good luck for those of you that have interviews. It's really not that hard. Calm down, relax. If you're someone that sweats, I actually turned my AC on even though it's in the middle of winter because I got super hot um, wearing this. I honestly don't normally do all of this dressing up. I wear whatever I have on for the day for my students, which is normally business casual, but it's not as dressy as I am right now. So 
It doesn't have to be expensive clothing, something cheap, simple. Ladies, button it up. If you're a guy, please wear a suit, jacket, and a tie, or at least have on a tie and a dress shirt. Um, make sure your hair is well groomed. Shave. Do not have facial hair. You can if you want to, but remember you want to respect Japanese culture and normally in the workplace you have natural hair color and you do not have facial hair. Ladies, you don't want to have, um, mul oh, for guys and girls, you don't want to show tattoos or multiple piercings. Those things are all not allowed. So just make sure that you don't mention those things and that they're all covered up. So that is my advice for you. Good luck. And again, I will update you when I have a part two. Um, I should hear back from them in a couple of days. So I will update you on Nova first and then Gabba, I guess, sometime next week. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you later. Bye.